Hello, N4H and H here. Uh, the rumor mill says that Yesu will be announcing a new transceiver soon. Uh, we'll we'll find out. Uh, supposedly sometime in August. But um, this is what I have about it so far. There's a few other. If you haven't seen this already, there's it's floating around on social media and a few websites. Uh, rumored to be the FT710. Now this does not look like an art artist rendering type of drawing, so it does look like a photo. So I'm presuming that's a prototype. Um, the FT710 should be a 100 watt version of this uh, again, supposedly. And then there should be an FT710M, as in Mary, which would be a 50-watt version. And then, uh, and I'm assuming that might be for countries where they have a limit on their power. And then a 10-watt version, which would be FT710S, Sierra, or for folks like me, SOTA. Uh, because the, if the 10-watt version is what, I'm, what I would hope, look at my mouse here, would be maybe cut off right along in here. It wouldn't have to be as big because it's not producing 100 watts. Uh, that would be ideal for soda. Now, what would even be better is if it has an internal tuner. Now, if you look over here on the left, it looks just like an FTDX. By the way, look, it's screaming FTDX10. All the way down here on the left is FTDX10. It's got power, tune, Vox Mox, headphones, mic jack. So I do see a tune button here on this 100-watt model. We hope there's a tune button there on the 10-watt version, which would be great. Uh, that would put this head-to-head -head with an ICOM IC705 for us soda folks, uh, but the 705 does not have an internal tuner. So that would be great. Now, this is not going to have 2 meters and 70 centimeters, according to what I've read so far, like the IC705. That doesn't bother me because when I'm hiking up a mountain, I'm, I've got my HT uh, clipped on, and I'm usually ch what I call chumming. I'm talking to folks on repeaters or simplex and saying, hey, I'm going to be on a mountain in a few minutes. Can you give me some contact? So that doesn't actually bother me. Um, I would say if you if you still want the shack in the box experience, then the FT 991A is where you want to go. You get all mode and 70 centimeters and two meters. Um, so this is not uh, looking like it's going to have the two meter 70 centimeters, but uh, 160 through six definitely looks like an FTDX 10. Uh, let me point out some things that I've noticed just from looking at the photo. So the display. Pretty much FTDX10. Now, I can tell by the scale here, the size of the knobs in the VFO, this radio is smaller than an FTDX10. I'm thinking possibly even a little bit smaller than an FT991A, uh, So, which which would be good. And again, if they if the 10-watt model is cut off here a little shorter, um, you know, if it's a couple of pounds of radio, that'd be great for summits on the air. And again, if they put that tuner in there. Now, you know, for 10 watts, the components for an ATU don't have to be as large. The capacitors and inductors can be smaller. And maybe they could even fit a tuner in there that is a wide range tuner. You know, most of the tuners that you get in your radios today are what we call, a, what I call, a touch up tuner. You know, your antenna is already close, less a three to one or less, and then it can, uh, you know, bring you down to a one to one, uh, 1 1.1 to 1, 1 1.05 to 1, you know, what have you. But um, the uh, wide range tuner would be great if they can fit that in there in the 10 watt version. Again, just assuming they would even have. Uh, this button on the 10 watt version that does the tuning. Now the display, I'm just going to say right quick, looks like FTDX10, even has the 3D uh, spectrum scope mode, has the oscilloscope, has the AFFFT, that's audio frequency fast Fourier transform. Okay, it's a big word, but uh, to say that we can monitor audio here, ours and people we're listening to. And I've shown that here on the channel in some videos. Uh, so really, other than that, it looks identical to a FTDX10, but there is an exception. Watch closely. I'm going to work my way from attenuation. That's on the FTDX10. IPO, that's on the FTDX10. Ro roofing, roofing filter is not there. Look, digital notch filter, DNF. Um, so that's interesting. So number one, that is one of my criticisms of the FTDX10. The DNF, the digital notch filter, if you leave it on, I don't leave it on. Okay. If you leave it on, it distorts the receive audio of a sideband signal that's, you know, like S9 or better. Um, has a tendency to distort those. Now, if you've got yours left on, you may not notice that. You might just think that's just the way they sound, or that's the way, you know, it's just the small speaker in the radio or whatever. Uh, try turning the DNF off if you've got yours uh, turned on. It it is default, or I should say by default, it is off. But some people just automatically engage it and leave it on. Like I said, it's Yesu speak for auto notch. The one in the FTDX10 introduced distortion, especially on stronger signals. So I just leave it off. If I need notch, I just use the manual notch. So it's interesting that they've replaced roofing filter with that. 
Well, let's talk about that. Where's the roofing filter? You know, it could be like the FT891. It has one 15 kilohertz uh, roofing filter, crystal, you know, f- physical roofing filter in the front end. And, uh, and then the DSP takes care of the rest. And it does have some mighty fine DSP, uh, still one of the most fun CW rigs. And I, I, I've used mine for to make it all the way to Mountain Goat and beyond for summits on the air. My 891 has just been a beast. Um, so maybe that's what they've done here. Maybe this doesn't have the roofing filters. It Maybe it's not even a down conversion receiver. You know, up conversion um, is what we've had for many, many years where uh, the first intermediate frequency, the first IF, was outside of the HF spectrum, usually around 40 megahertz or even 70 in that range. Um, and, uh, you know, not to get into much, too many of the weeds, but it helped on uh, cost of the radios years ago, late 70s. They went to up conversion. Um, helped the, do some filtering without in, increasing the price of the radio. Prior to that, most of the amateur receivers, uh, if, if, if not all, were what we call down conversion. The first intermediate frequency was in between, generally between 40 meters and 10 meters. So, you know, for example, in the FTDX 101D, MP, the FTDX 10, the FTDX 5000, that first IF is 9 megahertz right at it. So uh, why, why is that important? Well, the the roofing filters, the physical filters that do the heavy lifting in the front end of your receiver, were they were much better quality filters available for a lower price uh, at the at the nine megahertz range somewhere along in there versus forty and seventy megahertz. Uh, so, uh, kudos to Ten Tech in two thousand three. Uh, oh, let me back up a second. So pretty much the down conversion went away in the late seventies. Everybody went over to the up conversion. And it's one of the things I've warned you about here on the channel before. Don't get, I love, I use the word snookered. You know, don't get um, fooled by clever marketing that everything, that's, if it's new, it's always better. In the late 70s, they were marketing up conversion and it sounded wonderful, you know, but uh, it had its downsides as well. Um, so be careful about that. The down conversion, again, gives us the physical roofing filters that are sharper, better quality, and uh, not as expensive as expensive as one would cost for 40 megahertz and 70 megahertz. So what I'm wondering is, is this a straight SDR? Does it not have a physical roofing filter? Because a software-defined radio wouldn't have one. Now, some of the better quality software-defined radios will have some additional filtering in there ahead of the SDR, but uh, we don't know. Now, Yesu with the FTDX 101 DMP and the FTDX 10 introduced what they call the hybrid architecture, which had the benefit of a dual super heterodyne receiver with all of its selectivity, didn't have front end overload issues, and then it would feed the SDR stage. The SDR stage was giving us the beautiful readout here, uh, like on the FTDX 10 and, and the 101s. So we don't know, just not sure. It Maybe it has a uh, dual conversion and it's just one uh, like I said, maybe like the FT9 uh, 891 with one 15 kilohertz wide uh, roofing filter, and then you rely on the DSP to do the the rest of the filtering. Just uh, we'll have to find that out as time progresses. Hey, do me a favor, uh, subscribe to the channel and click that notification bell. And uh, as I update information about this radio, you won't miss an, a video about it. Uh, so again, subscribe to the channel, click that notification bell. And but for that matter, by the way, share the video with friends that you think might uh, might be interested in knowing about this. Uh, social media, email, text message, what have you. So anyway, back to the radio. Let's work our way over here to this area the, where the knobs are. Because uh, as far as the display is concerned, that's the only thing that stands out at, at, to me as being different than uh, on the FTDX10. So... Uh, obviously, the knobs seem to be in the same place as an FTDX10, but let's take a closer look. Function, that seems to be correct. There's a little curious thing about the function knob, these little notches here. I have to find out more about what that is later. Uh, but look at this. This is not volume and RF gain like it is on an FTDX10. Now, uh, on the FTDX10, you have what we call ganged as in like a motorcycle gang, ganged potentiometers, which means you have a knob and then you have an outer ring. So on the FTDX10, that's volume and RF gain, which can also be um, in, switched over to squelch if you go into the menu. But the function knob's in the same place. This has now been reassigned to step MCH and looks like DSP. So 
you have step and MCH on FTDX10, but it's some knobs up here, and then the outer dial does it. So it looks to me like this is going to be used for the step and MCH. So step some incremental tuning. MCH is cycling through your memory channels if you've programmed some in. Now remember, Yesu programs the 60 meter channels already. They're in the memory. If you click this button here, V slash M, and go into memory mode, turn that knob, I'm assuming, and you will eventually see memory bank 5. Um, in fact, most radios, most AC radios will come with 7 megahertz programmed into memory 1, and then after that you would see memory bank 5. It's up to you to program any more. So I'm assuming that this knob here would cycle you through those memories, and if you press V slash M and rotate that knob, you will see the 60 meter uh, channels. But maybe it also looks like it serves a double purpose DSP. I'm wondering if that might be where we can adjust the digital bandwidth, the DSP bandwidth, because look at this on FTDX 10 up here, that is shift. And then the outer ring is digital bandwidth or, or DSP width. Well, again, we've only got one knob here and it says RF gain squelch. So that's no longer a ring around the volume. It is now up here. And uh, as far as RF gain or squelch, that's menu selectable. I leave it on RF gain, which is the default. Um, if you go into FM mode it, uh, on most ASU radios, it switches it over to squelch for you. On HF, uh, when I say HF, I, I really mean when I'm in sideband mode, I want that to be an RF gain. Um, but look at this, AF gain, which is volume, audio frequency gain, it was over here. Now it's the bottom right. Well, on an FTDX10, that is the manual notch filter uh, adjustment, and then the outer ring is for audio peak filter and uh, contour or contour, whichever one you have enabled. The buttons are, are not here for those. In fact, look at this. Digital noise reduction on FTDX10 is a button down here above volume. It's been moved up here. A bigger, uh, looks like a rubberized type button. Uh, there's a button over here for narrow, narrow your filter width. So um, that is an option there. You know, to, uh, on most of the AC radios, that means that you can uh, narrow the filter width down below 500 hertz or not. So that's what that button is. QMB, quick memory bank, was over here by the function knob. That's been moved. Band was in between function and VFO, which was really cumbersome because you'd, you'd, you you want to maybe change bands and you'd accidentally hit your VFO. Um, I've been asking Yesu for over a year to give us a right-click option up here over frequency and, uh, and bring up the band uh, screen and let us choose band the same as we can when we choose a uh, mode over here it pops up the mode screen because on the ftdx 10 over here you had a mode button well you could click it with your mouse or your finger here where you see lsb and change mode with a, the same pop-up well but we can't change bands by doing anything here so that would have been nice um, to have on the ftdx 10 i just think that maybe the firmware update could do it but hey you know it's been over a year now and i haven't seen it uh, but um the band button is up here, which is good. That's out of the way now. The quick memory bank's up here out of the way. These are about where they normally are on FTDX10. Now you've got buttons across the top. Noise blanker, clarifier, split. I can't quite make out what that one is. Um, that one looks like mode. I believe that may be mode, um, which was over here about where the narrow button is. But, uh, you know, we'll find out in some future updates. We don't know whether these are backlit. A lot of complaints uh, from customers about the FTDX10 not having backlit buttons like the FT891 and the 991 and the 991A. So, uh, you know, we, we just have to find out in time whether Yesu paid attention to their customers or not. Those of you who watch my channel very much, you know, I'm just going to give you the straight scoop, like it or not. I'm not trying to protect any particular manufacturer. I don't get any uh, support from them. So I have been critical of Yesu in some areas because I think that they get so close to perfect and then they, they miss in some obvious areas. Uh, not backlighting that was one, uh, but even some bigger ones like, okay, give us mouse control, but don't let us select band. Don't let us click a frequency and use the scroll to go up and down to change frequency. You know, they get really close and then they fail in a, in to me, a, a simple uh, area. So I will just say if Yesu did not backlight these, they're not paying attention to their customers. And if they didn't make the 10 watt version of this, you know, cut off about right here and have an internal antenna tuner, they're not paying attention to their customers. But there you have it. The FT710, uh, again, it's a rumor right now. Um, the photo has been leaked, obviously, probably strategically, let's be honest. Um, but, uh, you know, 
it's exciting to see what might be might be on the horizon here for the, especially for those of us who are involved in summits on the air want a portable rig pota as well um but at least with pota you don't have to hike up a mountain with a 100 watt rig the uh, but we'll we'll see what happens as far as that is concerned and um you know and also regarding that internal tuner uh, or not so uh, hey, I want to shout out to the Patreon team who bring you these videos. Without them, this channel does not exist. So I uh, really value their support and uh, want to thank them for bringing this uh, video to you because it is brought to you by the members of the Patreon team who support in 4 h and Radio. If you'd like to join that team, uh, go to www.patreon.com forward slash n 4 h h That's patreon.com forward slash n 4 h h and hey, if you've watched the video this far, let me show you a bonus. There's a photo out there that shows a display behind this. So, you know, the FTDX10 can directly drive an external monitor. It's a DVID connector on the back. Now, some people complained about that. Why didn't they use HDMI? I speculated, it's just a guess, that maybe Yesu got an extremely good deal on a warehouse full of DVID connectors. Um, because really, in all in all honesty, the amount of resolution needed to drive that monitor is not much. Even DVID would be overkill. Uh, but who knows? Maybe they were um, you know listening to their customers again, and they decided to put an HDMI output for the external monitor. We just don't know for sure. So there's a little bonus for those of you who have watched the video this far. Um, Hey, please consider, like I, like I ask um, a lot, uh, like the video, click the thumbs up. That helps me out with YouTube tremendously. Please, just please do that. Um, it's, it's almost like a penalty if I don't get the enough of the likes. And then also consider subscribing to the channel. Click the notification bell, and you will be notified when I upload a new video, which is generally one a week, sometimes two a week. And, uh, and of course, like I said, please share the video with friends via social media, text message, email, what have you. And, uh, hey, again, thanks for watching, and 73 from N4 H&H. &H.